Shalom. Welcome back to Scar Forum, a prophetic think tank. Glad to have you with us. Um, this is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. And a uh, lot to cover today, so let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness that you are fulfilling your word. You're restoring Israel as you promised. After the uh, severe judgment of almost 2,000 years, they're now experiencing your favor and blessing and restoration. Hallelujah. We do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Lord, we pray that we would see the news through your eyes, not through the eyes of the media or man, that we would see truth and uh, that we would be lovers of the truth. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, as usual, I'd like to point you to my blog. You can find it at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And uh, start with the blog I did this week was about uh, Vice President Pence was speaking at the Christians United for Israel uh, annual summit in Washington, D.C. 7,000 people were gathered, uh, mostly Christians and Jews uh, that are supporters of Israel. And uh, the vice president spoke this year. Uh, this is an organization it's called CUFI, Christians United for Israel. And uh, the head of it is um, John Hagee. And the executive director is David Brog, uh, two men that God is really using. Uh, in fact, uh, I regularly recommend, uh, especially if you want to read some good reading, read David Brog's books. And you can look them up on the Internet. Uh, but anyway, President, uh, Vice President Pence spoke there, and uh, he made a very strong declaration, which I put on my blog. To the men and women of Christians United for Israel, this president hears you. This president stands with you. And I promise you that the day will come when President Donald Trump moves the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It is not a question of if, it is only when. And uh, I appreciate that. They, they mentioned that a couple times. And, and I appreciate that it was just reiterated again this week. I believe it was Monday night. Uh, the vice president spoke. And uh, I appreciate that. Also on my blog, I put a short video of uh, Senator Schumer, who I normally oppose just about everything he says, uh, but he made a great statement on the Senate floor supporting Israel and uh, and pledging that uh, it's not a Democrat or Republican issue, uh, but the United States are supporting Israel. And he makes quite a strong statement. And uh, and then I uh, added a scripture from Romans 11:11 11, 11, as I closed out the blog this week. Did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient, so God made salvation available to the Gentiles. But he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. Now, if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. And that's saying that when the Jews finally accept God's offer of salvation, which is inevitable, it will happen. Uh, not all Jews will accept God's offer of salvation, but uh, all the ones whose heart are for God will. All those who love the truth will accept his offer of salvation, which is through the Messiah, as they already believe, but they'll come to believe that the Messiah is actually Yeshua, Jesus well, um, let's get into the news. Uh, there's, it's sort of the major news now for for over a week has been the rise in uh, in violence in Jerusalem, and uh, it was ha start happening uh, just a few days after Doreen and I uh, flew out. We were there for three weeks and uh, enjoyed a just a wonderful, glorious 50th anniversary celebration of our own in Jerusalem's liberation. Uh, 50 years ago in the Six Day War, uh, but we just had such a wonderful time. We're so thankful. We we haven't got over it yet. <laughs> uh, people ask us if we're glad we're home, and I said we're we're glad we're home. We love being home, but we'd go back to Jerusalem in a minute, and that includes even with the events going on right now. Uh, when you watch the news, it sounds like uh, it's just like kind of a war all over the city or something. And it's not. It's actually. A, a uh, very, very narrow, specific uh, location, uh, but but uh, nevertheless, it does uh, create quite a bit of tension and concern in Israel. And uh, and the first event was uh, happened over a week ago. Terrorists 
from an Arab village in the north uh, uh, came onto the Temple, Temple Mount with weapons, including an automatic machine gun uh, or submachine gun, and uh, ended up killing two policemen who, it turns out, uh, weren't even Jews. They were Druze policemen uh, working in the city of and a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, also of interest is that the first medic to respond to the Temple Mount attack uh, that weekend was a Muslim. And there's a great story uh, about him. If you look up first medic to respond in uh, Times of Israel, you can read the full story. But uh, it, it's clear it, he's a Muslim, but he has the same attitude that the Israeli uh, medic services do of you treat whoever is wounded, whoever needs help. And his attitude is really great. Uh, different, really, than the kind of the larger view we usually get from the media. Uh, and then the story about the uh, the two that were murdered that weekend that were the Druze men. And there's a good article on uh, Breaking Israel News that says, Murdered Druze cops, descendants of biblical Jethro, fulfilling end of day's role as allies of Israel. And uh, it goes into scripture uh, in uh, Exodus 18, 1, where it talks about Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses, uh, Moses' father-in-law heard all of that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and uh, how Israel, how God had brought Israel out of the land of Egypt and so forth. And it goes through a whole story. I won't go through the whole story, but gives various scriptures and historical references to the fact that the Druze are descendants of Jethro. They actually, that, that's that's their main prophet. And, uh, and so they actually do stand with Israel. They're often mistaken for... Uh, Muslims that follow Muhammad, and they actually are not. So that's pretty uh, interesting. And and uh, yet they were the ones that were killed when the uh, terrorists were trying to kill Jews. Well, some of the uh, aftermath of that a week ago was that uh, Fatah, which is uh, Yasser, excuse me, um, Mahmoud Abbas's uh, organization in, in Palestinian Authority, Fatah calls for a day of rage amid the new Temple Mount security in wake of attack. Uh, as a result of the fact that they had got uh, actual armed weapons and uh, ammunition and, and a submachine gun on the Temple Mount, Israel decided to put up metal detectors uh, on the entrances, uh, I think something like eight different or nine different entrances for Muslims. <coughs> There's only one entrance to the Temple Mount for Jews and Christians. And, uh, and if you're a Jew or Christian, you cannot get on the Temple Mount without going through a metal detector. In fact, you can't even get to the Western Wall on the Western Wall Plaza uh, without going through metal detectors. There are several different entrances in, but they all have metal detectors. Uh, and and uh, Jews and Arabs living around Jerusalem and, in fact, all over Israel in the cities and Tel Aviv. If you go to a mall in Tel Aviv or uh, other cities, Haifa, uh, you, you can't walk into a mall without going through a metal detector. And yet, for some reason... Putting metal detectors outside the Temple Mount for the Muslims is is a cause for World War III. I mean, they're they're just going berserk, and it's ridiculous, and it's uh, totally illogical, and and well, of course, it's demonic, and uh, they they use any excuse they can, and so uh, Fatah calls for a day of rage, uh, and uh, they slammed Israeli terrorist procedures in the old city uh, after the metal detectors and cameras are installed. And uh, so they start uh, rioting. They've been rioting all week. Uh, as you go along through the week, uh, one thing after another happened. Hamas and Islamic Jihad called for an escalation of an intifada, an uprising against Israel, because of metal detectors. And, of course, what's happening here is that uh, two Israeli policemen were killed by three Palestinian terrorists who were themselves killed. And somehow Israel is the brunt of the accusations and uh, that Israel is must be resisted. And they, and they consider Israel is attacking the Temple Mount or the noble sanctuary, as the Muslims call it, and Al-Aqsa. Um, somehow this is twisted just the opposite as some sort of attack by Israel. And, uh, and you just can't make this stuff up. It's, it's ridiculous. So Hamas and Islamic Jihad call for more attacks and for mass demonstrations against Israel, home and abroad. And uh, unfortunately, um, Muslims are responding to that. Uh, a little later in the week, Fatah, again, Abbas's party, his ruling party, calls for an ongoing struggle 
to, quote, take control of Al-Aqsa and defeat racist Israeli plot on Temple Mount. Well, the idea that it's racist is ridiculous because it, the Palestinians are all Arabs and, uh, and, uh, and well, I, yeah, the Palestinians are Arabs, but Muslims are every nationality, basically, and, and they're not a race. And so they keep saying it's racist to oppose Islam and oppose uh, uh, the, uh, the attempt by Islam to take over the whole world. They say it's racist if you oppose them, and that's, again, not true. And uh, so the headline there was, Fatah says, the campaign for Jerusalem has begun. Islamic Jihad, even Abbas's group. Uh, and then in the context of this, going through the week, uh, on just, uh, just uh, an Israeli father, son, and daughter were stabbed to death in their West Bank home. Actually, this is a grandfather and his wife, and then his son and daughter are uh, stabbed in the her West Bank home there. There were 10 of them sitting around the table when one 19-year-old Palestinian terrorist uh, climbed over the wall into the Jewish area. This was a, a Jewish village in the West Bank. Uh, he climbed over a wall, got into the house, and started stabbing. And, uh, and so a 70-year-old man and his wife were killed, uh, and uh, his son and daughter were stabbed. Uh, actually, the 70-year-old's the, the wife is, uh, survived. In fact, they had the funeral today, and she was able to attend the funeral. But uh, she was she's still in serious condition. And uh, the children hid up and upstairs with one of the other uh, mothers, one of the other um, daughters or grand or uh, daughters-in-law. And uh, there, she had five children there in this group. Just just horrible. And uh, so. Uh, the terrorist's father, the father of the terrorists, said the closure of the Temple Mount, which was done for two days last weekend after the two Israeli soldiers were killed and the three terrorists were killed, Israel closed the Temple Mount for two days, conducted a search everywhere to make sure there weren't any more guns, and, uh, and then opened it up again, but, but with uh, metal detectors. So the terrorist's father basically defended his son, saying... He, uh, he, he was motivated because of the uh, uh, closure of the Temple Mount. That's why he goes into an Arab, I mean, excuse me, an Israeli village and, and kills three people with a knife. He was he was finally shot by an off-duty IDF soldier from a neighboring house who heard the commotion and came over and saw what was happening, shot him through the window, but he didn't die. He was, he was being uh, held now by Israeli authorities. Another story in uh, Times of Israel, with a husband and in-laws being stabbed below, Michelle Solomon rushed her kids to safety. Uh, the newly widowed mother of five says she heard terrorists speaking Arabic and knew something was wrong. And a, a picture of their beautiful family is there in that, that story. Just amazing. And, uh, and meanwhile, by the way, the mother of the actually Uh, comes out and says uh, she's proud of her son uh, and believes that he will be rewarded by Beep Beep, the God of Islam, who, as we know, is not the same God as the God of Israel, the God of Christians. Uh, meanwhile, Abbas confirms he halted security coordination with Israel, warns that Israelis will lose. So, so with things breaking out and more uh, threats and actual attacks of terror happening, Abbas decides this is a good time to stop having security arrangements and in, in working together with Israelis for security, which is very clear that he's actually trying to uh, support a new intifada. It's very serious. It's, it has some of the similar things that some of you may remember back in 2000 after the breakoff of the Camp David Accords when, when uh, Arafat rejected the incredibly generous offer uh, of Israel for peace and giving it. Palestinians their own state. He rejected it because the Temple Mount wasn't included and called for an army to come and defend the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. Well, 
uh, that ended up being going into an, uh, an intifada that killed hundreds of people, uh, Jews and Palestinians, in the bus bombings and suicide bombings of, of that intifada. Well, the uh, Times of Israel has another story. In Jerusalem, some Muslims warn religious war as others say it's begun. And so this is the uh, rhetoric that's on right now. There are uh, riots every day in, again, very, very tight locations, not all over the country or all, not even all over Jerusalem. Jerusalem itself is basically still functioning like normal. But uh, these this stirring up of hatred and, and calling for war, really. And uh, Debcophile has kind of sums it up, I think, in the best way. This is a war for the sovereign control of the Temple Mount. And I've said before, you'll remember me saying this, that in 1967, when Israel uh, liberated Jerusalem, uh, it had been occupied for 19 years by the Jordanian army. Previous to that, Jews had been free to go anywhere, and so were Arabs. But af after the War of Independence, uh, Jordan took over uh, the old city of Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, and so they were ruling it for 19 years, occupying it illegally, because it never was part of Jordan by any international approval or agreement. So after Israel liberated Jerusalem, uh, Israel at that point obtained sovereign control over the, the whole West Bank, Jerusalem, um, and the Old City, and including the Temple Mount. And Israel has retained sovereignty ever since. But now there's a new narrative being spoken that that the, the Muslims have had sovereignty all along, that Israel is trying to take their sovereignty away. Well, they don't have sovereignty. Israel simply delegated authority to Muslim religious officials to be custodians of the Temple Mount, but not they never uh, ceded any sovereignty. So Israel has sovereignty, but this is actually... So the purpose here behind this whole thing is that the, that the Muslims are trying to gain sovereignty over the Temple Mount. So uh, that ought to give you some clarity about what to pray about. A uh, good article on uh, breaking Israel news. There is no moral equivalency in Shabbat terror massacre. A lot of the media are actually reporting, you know, uh, in, in the last week they're saying X number of Israelis, like three Israelis, three Palestinians killed in, in a flare-up of Israeli-Palestinian violence. No, it's not a flare-up of Israeli violence. Israel is not uh, initiating any of this. They respond when terrorists murder their civilians. And then they murder, they don't murder, but they kill the terrorists or they arrest them. Well, there's a scripture for that in uh, Proverbs 17, verse 15. The New King James says it this way, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them are alike an abomination to Jehovah. The New Living Translation says it even more clearly. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, both are detestable to Jehovah. And uh, that can't get much clearer. And that's what moral equivalence is. It's making equal the wicked or the, or the um, innocent. Um, Israel Today has a story. Who would believe the Palestinian peace discourse? And of course, it, it's discussing the idea that with the totally illogical and really demonic uh, perversion of truth. How can you ever have Palestinian peace partners with the, with Abbas or Hamas or Islamic Jihad or any of them? Times of Israel has another story where uh, Israeli envoy to the United States, uh, Ron Dermer, says uh, Israel wants to, the U.S. to cut funding to Palestinians over terrorism. Of course, the Taylor Force Act is, is before, is now being considered by Congress and needs to be uh, enacted. Uh, to with, withhold funding from the Palestinians uh, as, as long as they continue to support terrorism. And the budget of the Palestinian Authority has actually been increased by double digits uh, percentage uh, to support terrorist murderers in Israeli jails and their families. Uh, just a, another perversion. And, and pray and, and talk to your congressman about repealing or about voting for the Taylor Force Act. Taylor Force was a an American who was just on vacation in Israel and was stabbed to death in Tel Aviv by a terrorist attack. Uh, Jihad Watch has a story uh, from Jordan. Muslims attack Israeli embassy in Amman and murder an Israeli security guard. That's hardly even mentioned. That just happened uh, a couple of days ago as well. 
Uh, Turkey says Israel's two-day closure of the Temple Mount after the attack was a crime against humanity. Give me a massive break putting up metal detectors and closing it down for a, a sweeping of the grounds to make sure there aren't any other guns there for just two days and then reopening it. That's a crime against humanity. Uh, that's why you can't believe the rhetoric. And that is a president of Turkey. Another uh, quote from him, uh, Erdogan resumes incitement against Israel over Temple Mount crisis. He's been hammering it all week. Uh, Al Jamina reports that. And then uh, Jihad Watch again says, Turkish, a uh, Turkish uh, member of parliament says, there is no use in teaching math to a child who does not know the concept of Jihad. So in Turkey, they're now uh, prioritizing that teaching children Jihad is more important than math. Uh, yeah, what uh, what good can come out of that? Uh, Wally Chubat's uh, website this week had a story. Erdogan of Turkey literally resurrects the image of the Ottoman beast and vows that all who defy who defy him, Erdogan, will be beheaded. Uh, that's quite an amazing story. You might want to look that up on uh, Shubat.com. Uh, again. Uh, the rise of the uh, caliphate and the caliph and the antichrist. Uh, article on Israel National News, J Street and Soros are outside the White House. 5,000 people, uh, 7,000 actually, attended uh, the QFI conference I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, outside were uh, people uh, standing against uh, the, uh, the the Christians, uh, Christian Zionists and, and protesting and so forth. And uh, they're uh, right next to uh, the White House, and they're standing for for terrorism, basically. Um, there's a great story in Israel Today magazine about uh, a man who uh, spoke in tongues and uh, didn't know what he was speaking, but turns out it, it was Arabic, and an Arabic man heard him uh, and actually heard a call to preach the gospel. <laughs> uh, they were both believers. But the, the man who spoke Arabic didn't know Arabic, but he was just speaking in tongues. And the, and the Jewish man, who was a believer, already a follower of Jesus, uh, it was actually a call to him into the ministry to, to preach the gospel. Pretty amazing. Uh, so, uh, well, I guess we got to stop today. There's so much going on, but uh, let's just pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, we thank you that we know the real peace is when Yeshua uh, HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, comes and we pray for that peace. And we pray, Lord, that many, many uh, people, Jews, Muslims, Arabs, Palestinians, people around the world will, will still yet uh, be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God. Thank you, Father. In his name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.